Hello, friends. We are now on part three of the three-part trifecta series where we talk about what happens to you if you have a pending domestic violence criminal case, a domestic violence civil injunction case, and a divorce case. You got all three. And to help us get home, we have a guest on the show, Mr. Scott F. Cutler, criminal defense attorney extraordinaire, and Erech Colon Morales out of Orlando, Florida, family law attorney welcome back to the divorce broadcast my name is manny cigar coming to you from miami florida and we're gonna take this home starting with or continuing with better said the (laughs) third leg of the trifecta which is when you have a divorce case i love how scott sets this one up scott we talked about how your supposed client has a pending domestic violence criminal court and then he or she finds out they have an injunction and as they're sitting in your office how does the conversation go (laughs) regarding the divorce so usually at that point they're pretty awestruck and i have to say to them, well, let me ask you this difficult question. Where do you see this marriage going? Or how do you foresee your ability to see your children going? And I'll get that blank stare, which tells me they really haven't thought through this all the way. And unfortunately, many times it's the latter. Well, it looks like this is going to be a divorce. And I explain to them, I say, look, you have a battle on three fronts. You have it in criminal court, you have it in civil court with the restraining order, and you're going to have it in family law court with whether it's a divorce or custody issues. And I said, it's going to be strenuous. It's going to be time consuming. It's going to be expensive. However, this is an investment in your future. How this is handled is going to dictate the roadmap and the course that you take moving forward with the right counsel and the right support. We can get you through this and we can do it successfully. And then I certainly recommend bringing in a good family law attorney, such as the cigar firm. Great stuff. That sounds like sage advice, my friend. And thank you so much. E. Wretch, how does the criminal case and the injunction case affect affect the family court cases. So when you're starting the divorce process, obviously we need to be aware and adhere to any of the terms that are in the criminal stay away order or the domestic violence uh, temporary injunction. It affects it hugely because a lot of times those orders will dictate that there is no contact between the spouses, no contact with the children, no contact with your pets. And at that point, you know, it's all 100% against the respondent. So it's super important that in the initial petition for dissolution of marriage, or including all the things that are going to be able to help the respondent, I guess, see the light in a way. Yeah, I think it's probably one of the most difficult consultations or meetings when you when you find the yeah. nice people that Scott refers and they have these two cases open. It's like they're shell shocked. There's so much going on with them in it. And then I guess you got to figure out how to unwind all this stuff, right? Because if on top of it, you've been married for 10 years, what are you supposed to do now, right? Yeah, it's a lot to unpack. And on both sides, it's not just the respondent, but there's always a lot of issues and concerns on the petitioner side. So one of the things that happens when you file a petition for or dissolution of marriage or a divorce case in Miami-Dade County, what happens to the domestic violence injunction case? Yeah, oftentimes, and what is supposed to happen is that one judge will then oversee both cases. So it will get consolidated. This helps streamline all the issues and just makes it a little bit more smoother in the process because you'll have one judge who has the facts for everything going on in the case. You think it's a little bit better for the same judge to handle both? 1,000%. Obviously, there's pros and cons to that, but it makes a little bit simpler with handling and managing the case. I know that we had mentioned domestic violence, criminal cases, and injunction cases can have a very significant effect on family court cases, specifically when you're dealing with the parenting plan and time-sharing statute, which recently changed, by the way. Under 61.13, how do these cases affect parental responsibility? So as I previously mentioned, parental responsibility is ideally who gets to make the decisions for the children. With respect to shared parental responsibility, which means that both parties are able to jointly and mutually make decisions regarding the children, a lot of times when there is a conviction of domestic violence of a battery misdemeanor or even higher going into a felony, a lot of times the presumption is that it'll be sole parental responsibility instead of shared. So off the bat, you're already starting in the negative because of the conviction per se. At that point, by way of the petition, we would have to rebut the presumption 
motion and enlist terms or allegations as to why the respondent or the spouse would be entitled to having shared parental responsibility, which can be an uphill battle for them. And then the same factors are considered for timesharing purposes? Correct. So for purposes of determining what the timesharing schedule would be, the court has to consider the domestic violence, has to consider the type of incident, whether it involves also the children, maybe not an incident between the parties, but sometimes there's minor children involved that are also being the victims in the case. And then another factor that the court will also consider is whether there was false reporting of the domestic violence or that child abuse. And that's something that they will have to consider as well when determining what the schedule should be. So just kind of walk me through it. If Scott refers a client who has an open domestic violence criminal case and an open domestic violence civil case, what is their current status in terms of contact with either their spouse or their children when they come see us? Yeah, their contact is nothing at that point. Um, It's zero. So a lot of times they're very panicked, very stressed, especially if they haven't been able to talk or see with their children. If it is a, you know, incident that involved the spouses, ideally we will have to include certain requests in the petition for dissolution of marriage to be able to assist and relieve that stress. Unfortunately, I will say when the incident, the domestic violence case itself involves an injunction that was entered on behalf of children, that's where it gets a little bit more difficult in being able to answer some of the client's answers with respect to when can I have time with my children? Because at Uh, that point, the criminal case will take over. Scott, how often would you say that uh, the domestic violence case involves the the children in a relationship? You know, considering that domestic violence can be an unmarried couple, boyfriend, girlfriend, as well as married couples and married couples with children, let's play the statistics and say a third of the cases that have children involved. But one thing I think to point out to our viewers is that this unification or this trifecta and bringing in the family law attorney for the divorce or the custody issues actually has a good benefit to the client, to the respondent. And that is that we can, you can work out some type of a no contact or no harmful contact agreement in your universal package that you're putting together there as part of the divorce or the time sharing, which then could lead to a dismissal of the temporary civil domestic violence restraining order or avoid the the impact of a permanent. And those, while they're not a criminal conviction, they show up as a black eye in people's record. And also, if the stars line up, perhaps an agreement that they'll agree to diversion in the misdemeanor battery situation. Understood. I I agree with you. So the person comes, they have no contact with the kids. We file for divorce. What are some of the things that we're starting to file immediately after that? So a lot of times what we'll file is a motion for temporary relief. And by temporary, I mean any kind of relief that you want the court to grant you while the case is open. So that will include a request for temporary time sharing, a request for temporary parental responsibility, also a request for our family wizard or kind of parent app that will allow the parties to at least talk about their children. You know, so a lot of times that will also affect the injunction case because we have to account for exceptions for how the parties can communicate with or about the children. Does it go from zero time sharing to 100% time sharing or what are some of the steps that kind of happen in between? Yeah, unfortunately it won't be a quick, quick battle. Let's say we file that motion, we then have to set it for hearing. The judge has to hear the testimony, see all the evidence, and determine a temporary time sharing schedule and some of the relief that we're referring to. Unfortunately, a lot of times before getting there, the court does like to see a lot of therapeutic services prior to determining that schedule with either individual counseling for the spouse or the person who has the injunction against them. Maybe they'll want individual therapy for the children if they were a part of the incident. Maybe they will want the spouses to each take part of co-parenting counseling. So there's a lot of things and a lot of steps prior to getting to that time with their children. And when these cases are involved, a lot of times when the injunction is against the kids, let's say there was a violent act against the kids, then all bets are kind of off, huh? Yeah. At that point, there's not much that we can do. We have to be patient and we have to just toe the line with respect to whatever's going to happen with the injunction against the respondent 
when dealing with children who were involved in the case. Erect, you were about to talk about equitable distribution. I guess it's because if you can't have contact with your spouse, you can't divide your stuff, right? Yeah, that always, it becomes very, very tough to manage everything because if you can't talk about the financial stuff with your spouse, you're kind of stuck with what you've been doing previously. When you file for a divorce, is there a standing order or a status quo order here in Miami-Dade County? In Miami-Dade County and in several other counties, there will be an administrative status quo order that applies to family law cases. And that status quo order will essentially state exactly what it says, status quo. Everything remains the same. So if one spouse was paying for the mortgage, that spouse continues to pay for the mortgage. And sometimes that financial strain is difficult because you will have a spouse who can't be 500 feet from the other person. They can't be in their home. So you will find them paying the mortgage for the house they're not allowed to be in and will also be stuck with trying to pay rent somewhere else because they need to find somewhere else to live. However, it kind of leads into an additional request that we will make in our motion for temporary relief, which may include some relief with respect to support or temporarily dividing some of the responsibilities in the marriage. So I guess the divorce case is the only mechanism you have by which you can divide your stuff if there's an injunction in, in place. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, correct. Have either of you two had situations in which the children have had to testify in either the family court case or the civil injunction case? I have. And what usually happens when, when that's involved? It, it must be pretty difficult. You know, a lot of times there'll be an order entered in the criminal case. You have to stay away. And then the family law case will carve out exceptions, at which point I then have to go back to the criminal judge and try to modify the criminal stay away order to be consistent with what the family law judge did. Now, some judges will go ahead and, and do that. Others will say that the family law order supersedes anything that the criminal order says. So I essentially do whatever the judge says to do. But Putting that aside, I had one case where the family court judge had not ruled as far as the child being seen by my client, and the criminal judge decided to bring the child in to chambers and spoke wow. to the minor child and came out and reached a ruling that she was not going to let the defendant, the respondent, my client have visitation with the child at this point. So it gets a little sticky. Wow. So we'll treat that as your pro tip. Sounds really important. How about you, Rich? Yes, there are applications that are very popular in many of our cases. It can be our family wizard or talking parents. There's an assortment of them. But ideally, these applications are accounts where both parties can make and communicate through those applications to talk about the children. And sometimes we can even make modifications to the stay away order to include them talking about things relating the finances or administrative portion of the marriage. But as you mentioned, it is very important that these terms and these exceptions are placed into the stay away order by way of the criminal case or the civil case in order to allow for them to make those communications in the parent application. So our filing wizard and talking parents is good as long as there's a court order that says it's good. All right. So good stuff. I think that might be a wrap on our three-part series. Attorney Scott Cutler, thank you again for coming on the show. One last time, my friend, where's a good contact number that the folks out there can get a hold of you in case they have a pending criminal case or injunction case in Florida? They can reach me 24-7 on my direct cell phone, 305-804-2436, or you can email me, Scott, at cotler.legal. And I respond to both emails and calls immediately. Manny, Iretch, it's been a pleasure being with the two of you. I think we should lay the groundwork for what could be the fourth prong for another show, and that is the DCF allegation. Yes. Thank you both for coming on. I am so grateful for you sharing your knowledge, your respective knowledge with the audience out there. I know that we are probably going to be doing a lot of good and helping a lot of people out there in the world. So if anyone wants to reach out to us, you can reach us at www.cigarlawfirm.com. We have offices in Miami, Florida and Orlando, Florida. Se habla español. Please do us a favor and like this video. We want to get Scott and Rich's face out there all over the world and subscribe to the <laughs> Divorce Broadcast. Keep an eye out for the trifecta. 
and stay safe all of you thank you